सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस चैनल माई सेल्फ आदित्य प्रताप सिंह आई हैव डन माई ग्रेजुएशन फ्रॉम सी आई यू एंड नाउ आई एम परस्यूइंग माई मास्टर्स इन जेनेटिक्स प्लांट ब्रीडिंग फ्रॉम बी सी के वी वेस्ट बेंगाल सो टूडे आई विल भी डिस्कसिंग सम पॉइंट्स रिलेटेड टू बायोटेक्नोलॉजी कीपिंग इन माइंड फॉर द जे आर एफ एंड एस आर एफ एग्जाम्स स्पेशली रिलेटेड टू हॉर्टिकल्चर सो आई विल भी डिस्कसिंग इन द सर्फेस आउटलाइन ओनली बिकॉज इन प्लांट साइंसेस ग्रुप दे आस्क इन डिटेल बट इन हॉर्टिकल्चर ग्रुप दे आस्क ओनली द सर्फेस नॉलेज सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो फर्स्ट पॉइंट वॉट आई एल डिस्कस इज दैट जीनोम सिक्वेंसिंग सो दे आर थ्री मेथड्स यूज फॉर जीनोम सिक्वेंसिंग द फर्स्ट टू दैट इज सेंगर डायडी ऑक्सी न्यूक्लियोटाइड मेथड एंड मैक्सम गिलवर्ट मेथड दे आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज फर्स्ट जेनरेशन डी एन एस सिक्वेंसिंग और जीनोम सिक्वेंसिंग मेथड्स द नेक्स्ट जेन सिक्वेंसिंग मेथड्स लाइक सॉलिड सिक्वेंसिंग एंड पोलोनी सिक्वेंसिंग आर द रिसेंट वंस एंड विच गिव हाई थ्रोट पुट सिक्वेंसिंग रिजल्ट If you talk about the first bacterial genome sequence that is of Haemophilus influenzae and the first multicellular organism sequence is Cynorhabditis elegans it's a nematode it's a model nematode for studying animal genomes the first plant sequence is Arabidopsis thaliana as you all know it's called model plant the family of Arabidopsis is Brassicaceae the first crop plant sequence is rice the first fruit crop sequence is grape and the first vegetable crop genome sequence is that of cucumber so from so few frequently asked questions is are as follows the map unit what is a map unit it is the distance between two genes that are combined with a frequency of 1% this map unit is defined as 1 cm or centimorgan and then gene cloning what does it mean it means the isolation of a gene and the process of producing identical copies of that particular gene and gene pyramiding is the technique of combining two or more major gene we do gene pyramiding generally to provide vertical or horizontal resistance to insect pest or disease in crop plants so let's talk about plant biotechnology The word biotechnology was first coined in 1917 by a Hungarian agri engineer Karl Ireki. So this is a frequently asked question they used to ask in JRF and SRF also sometimes in net also who coined the term biotechnology so the answer is Karl Ireki. Similarly the term biochemistry was first used by Newberg in 1903. So let's discuss the biotech part in two sub parts plant, part A plant tissue culture and part B recombinant DNA technology. so coming to the tissue culture what is an explant so any plant part which we use for growing on a nutrition media to regenerate a whole new plant is called an explant suppose if you are using shoot tip that also is explant if you are using root tip that also is an explant so any plant part which is used for growing in nutrition media under aseptic condition is called explant so father of tissue culture is g haberland the first time the uh, first time the concept of tissue culture was given by watching 1878 the most famous media used in tissue culture is ms media murasike and skug media the ph of culture media is kept between 5.6 to 5.8 the temperature usually is kept as 25 degrees celsius the source of carbon in media of for tissue culture is sucrose and in inorganic nutrients like we can categorize the inorganic nutrients into two group either macronutrient or micronutrient so what's the difference is the differentiation between macronutrient and micronutrient is done on the basis of their concentration used so if the concentration of any particular nutrient is more than 0.5 millimolar per liter so we will consider it as micronutrient if it is less than 0.5 millimolar per liter then we will call it as micronutrient so and then the most frequently used vitamin for nutrient media is vitamin b1 the explant is sterilized with 0.1% hgcl2 or that is mercury chloride or 2% sodium hypochlorite and if you are using calcium hypochlorite the concentration may go up to 9 to 10% So there are two very important terms related to tissue culture that is de differentiation and re differentiation so people get confused a lot so let's see the difference then de differentiation 
So the de-differentiation is the phenomena of a mature cell reverting to the meristematic state and forming undifferentiated callous tissue. However, redifferentiation is the phenomena of conversion of a component cell of callous tissue to whole plant or plant organ. Okay, now coming to the sterilization techniques. A sterilization can be done by various methods. So normally heating is used for glasswares and culture media. Dry heat, particularly in hot air oven, the temperature being 160 to 180 degrees Celsius and time being 3 hours is used for glasswares and steam or moist heat or wet heat what we get in autoclave at 1 deg 121 degrees Celsius at 15 psi for 15 minutes is used for sterilization of the culture media. And then ultra filtration with millipore membrane, uh, membrane filters having pore size of 0.45 micrometer is used for thermolabile compounds such as vitamins, hormones or antibiotics. And then uh, on the working table what we call it as laminar flow there is a filter called as HEPA filter high efficiency particulate air filter whose pore size is 0.2 micrometer. So this one HEPA is used in laminar flow. So now coming to the different stages in plant tissue culture. The first stage or stage 0 is a preparative stage where we do the selection of X plant. The second stage, stage 1 is initiation of culture. So after selection of X plant, sterilization of the X plant and avoiding browning of the media. Then the third stage called as stage 2 is the multiplication or proliferation stage. After stage 2 comes stage 3 which is rooting of the shoots and then the last and final stage is stage 4 where we do the transplantation of the rooted plants or plantlets. So there is important thing to note a stage 0 that is the preparative stage or we can call it the selection of explant is the most important as per exam point of view. Then coming to callus culture. Callus means undifferentiated mass of cell. The purpose of callus culture is creation of variation and screening in vitro. So this we can achieve once the uh, plants are regenerated from callus. Then embryogenesis is the pro process of formation of somatic embryos from the callus. Uh, particularly we should call it as somatic embryogenesis. There is a mistake here. And then cytokinin to oxygen ratio is important. So how? If we see the function of cytokinin and auxin, cytokinin's major function is cell division and auxin's major function is root induction. So when cytokinin to auxin ratio is high, that means there is more cytokinin than auxin, then collagenesis or shoot induction will take place. Opposite to this, when the cytokinin to auxin ratio is low, that means auxin is higher in concentration. In that case, rhizogenesis or root induction will take place. So this is very important from exam point of view. Then coming to anther culture or microspore culture. It was first time achieved by Maheshwari and Guha in 1984 in the crop Dhatura. Production of haploid plants is achieved by anther culture. This has been asked in JRF 2017. So the commercially used in coal crops and potato this anther culture and then few varieties are developed using anther culture such as guan one in rice, jinghua one in wheat and haihua in sweet pepper. So then so now coming to totipotency what is totipotency it is the ability of a cell or tissue to form complete organ or plant. The term was given by TH Morgan Thomas Hunt Morgan. In some books, you will find the name as Vasil or Vasil, whatever you call it. Then coming to embryo culture. Embryo culture is used where embryo abortion takes place after pollination and fertilization in many crops. And more importantly, in if we cross intergeneric crosses or interspecific crosses, in those cases, embryo abortion is a very common phenomena in wide hybridization. So to rescue the embryo which may abort, we use this embryo culture technique. Then gynogenesis was first discovered by Sanoim. So if you see the achievements of embryo culture and gynogenesis, low temperature tolerance from fasciolus retensis to fasciolus 
vulgaris that is common French bean has been achieved. Then root knot nematode resistance from Cucumis metulliferous and Cucumis anguira to Cucumis melo has been achieved. And then interspecific hybridization has been possible using this uh, technique to transfer insect pest resistance from Solanum peruvianum to Solanum esculentum. So now coming to the meristem culture of micrografting, it was first discovered by Morel and Martin. It is used to develop virus free planting material. Meristem is the region of maximum cell division, usually present in the apex of uh, the branches or you may say main stem of any plant. First time it, the meristem culture was used for the crop dahlia. A stage 0 of meristem culture, that is in vitro culture of meristematic tissue, was given by Deverag and Main in 1981. So micrografting is highly, highly used in citrus. When you see the dioecious plants, in some cases the male plant is uh, more desirable in some female plant is more uh, female plant is more desirable so in case of papaya we know that only females set good fruit so females are desirable whereas in asparagus the male only give productive part that is arrow so male is desirable in case of asparagus so coming to chemotherapy this chemotherapy or thermotherapy are used to produce virus free materials either for tissue culture or just for cultivation. So coming to chemotherapy, virus free plants can also be obtained when antiviral compounds are added into nutrient solution, ribavirin also called as virazole or 2-thiouracil can be used. So coming to shoot tip grafting or micro grafting. In a number of species, including those of citrus, peach, and apple, attempts at meristem culture remained unsuccessful in virus elimination. As an alternative, shoot tip of 0.14 to 0.18 mm in length, isolated aseptically from a disease plant, were grafted onto young etiolated root stock seedlings grown in vitro. You may notice that we are giving example only of horticultural crops so that uh, it may be of your use. Even if it doesn't come in exam, at least you will have a broad knowledge. Coming to virus indexing, this is very important for exam point of view. Among serological techniques, enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA. Sometimes they just ask the full form of ELISA. And nucleic acid hybridization techniques such as southern blotting, blotting or northern blotting techniques are popular. Other method includes use of indicator plants. Indicator plants are those which show the symptom of viral infection much clearly and distinctly. So we use the indicator plants to know if the symptom of virus or virus infection is there or not. So here a small note here. Meristem tip culture may also result in loss of certain horticultural characteristics which are controlled by presence of virus such as clear vein character of geranium CV crocodile. So the clear vein character of geranium is lost if we uh, do virus free geranium cultivation. Now coming to protoplast culture. So development of somatic hybrid or hybrid cytoplasm plus nucleus of both the cells. In 1972, Carlson and co-workers produced the first somatic hybrid plant by fusing the protoplast of Nicosiana glauca and Nicosiana longsdorfi. Cybrid, what is a cybrid? When the hybrid cell has cytoplasm of both the cells but nucleus of only one species, it is called as cybrid. And then canamycin is used to kill agrobacterium. And B5 media was discovered by Gamborg. It is also called as Gamborg's media, B5 media. And then calcium chloride is necessary for stability of plasma membrane. And then osmotic regulation or osmoregulation is maintained by sorbitol and mannitol. And then cell wall degradation is achieved by using cellulase and pectinase plus hemicellulases. So all three of these enzymes, cellulase, pectinase, there is a small spelling mistake here, it's cellulase. So cellulase, pectinase and hemocellulases all together are called as mesero enzyme. So now coming to isolation of protoplast, mainly there are two methods, mechanical and enzymatic method. In mechanical method, 
it was first uh, started by Klecker in 1892. He has first initiated the protoplast isolation by mechanical means. The cells were kept in a suitable medium. He called it as plasmolyticum and then it was cut with a fine knife. Coming to enzymatic method, in 1960, Cocking used a concentrated solution of cellulase enzyme prepared from the cultures of the fungus Myrothesium verrucaria to degrade the cell walls. However, real progress in this area was made after 1968 when cellulase and macero enzymes became commercially available. The commercial preparation of enzymes for protoplast isolation were first employed by Takebi et al. in 1968. A small note here. Source of material that is leaf has been the most favorite source of plant protoplast because it allows the isolation of a large number of relatively uniform cells without necessity of killing the plants. The two enzymes essential to isolate protoplast from plant cells are cellulases and pectinases. The pectinase degrades mainly the middle lamella which is composed of calcium and magnesium pectate and the cellulase required to digest the cellulosic cell wall. The most widely used osmotica or osmoregulant are sorbitol and manitol and the concentra concentration being used usually lies between 450 to 800 millimolar. So protoplast fusion, it requires high calcium and high pH condition. The other chemical used is polyethylene glycol in short called as PEG and the other or the specialized method of protoplast fusion is electrofusion where 800 to 1000 volt of electricity is used for one microsecond. So variation in protoplast fusion. The first one is somaclonal variation. The term somaclonal variation was coined by Larkin and Scowcroft. This question is very frequent in NET, JRF, SRF everywhere. So you guys must remember Larkin and Scowcroft were the first one to give the term somaclonal variation. So it may be of genetic or heritable type caused by mutation or other changes in the DNA itself or it may be of epigenetic or non-heritable variability caused by temporary phenotypic changes. Now coming to the importance of somaclonal variation or you may say the achievements by use of somaclonal variation. Successful utilization of somaclonal variation heavily depends on its systematic evaluation and judicious utilization in breeding programs. Examples, scented geranium, velvet rose, thornless blackberries have been developed by use of somaclonal variation. Then Lincoln, Logan, Rubus and High Suyumi protoplast derived rice cultivars are there and then in potato, Rosette Burbank. So somaclonal variation are employed in disease resistance improvement. For example, in sugarcane, it was used to develop eye spot disease resistant cultivar. The disease eye spot is caused by Helminthospora saccharii. The downy mildew and Fiji virus resistance in potato. And then protoplast derived Rosette Burbank resistance to Phytophthora infestans that is late blight of potato has been achieved. Then coming to the new vegetable developed by protoplast fusion, we all have heard of this Refeno brassica cross between red. Then the next one is Ruta baga or Swedge brassica, Nepo brassica. It is a root vegetable, chromosome number being 2n is equal to 38. It is a cross between turnip that is brassica compestris or brassica repa and cabbage brassica oleracea. Third one is Hakuran. It is a cross between cabbage and Chinese cabbage. It is a leafy vegetable. Fourth one is Cucumis hytivus. It is a cross between Cucumis hystrix and Cucumis sativus. And the last one is Pomato. It is a cross between potato and tomato. What I mean by saying cross is not hybridization. It's not natural cross pollination or uh, natural hybridization. It's protoplast fusion only. Generally, we represent such crosses not by giving the symbol of cross but by giving the symbol of plus sign in between the two crops. Suppose talking about Refeno brassica, so in between radish and cabbage we put plus sign to indicate that it has been developed by protoplast fusion and not by hybridization. Okay, this much for today. Thank you so much for being here.